Kansas wears the home whites as the better seed to start the tournament, and the Jayhawks with the first possession. Diener on Heinrich. Puts Wade on Miles. He can give up some shots there, and Miles surprises everybody. Jim with the first two from the outside. That's actually a three. Not what you expect from Miles. Absolutely not. Great sign for Kansas. Wade trying to work on Heinrich, gives it up Diener. Right back Wade, and the Jayhawks come out with it. Excellent man-to-man -man defense that time by Miles and Heinrich. Diener give up a lot of size to Heinrich. Miles, can he do it again? That would really be surprising to two jumpers in a, in a row. Marquette's road, well, I tell you, there have been doubters every step of the way. Give this team credit. Defying what everyone felt would be, who knows, a Kentucky bracket, but to beat Holy Cross, Missouri, Pittsburgh, and then the thrashing of Kentucky in the final. What a strong regional by the Golden Eagles. Away from the ball, a push off Colt against Graves of Kansas. The one thing, Billy, you said he's got to be careful for. And there was one where he didn't get a reaching foul. Diener driving into the basket without the ball. Again, Jeff Graves has got to stay out of foul trouble early on. So far, Wade has been relatively passive against Heinrich. That was tipped out by Graves. Heinrich known for his great assist ability, ability but also as one of the best defensive guards in college basketball, particularly on the ball. And how about the block of the Jason Gardner? three at the end of the game last week at the West Regional. And then having the presence of mind is staying right with Gardner and making sure that he didn't get a good look on that retrieve of the, that block shot. Jason Gardner was here yesterday. A little shoot around for the NABC All-Stars. and Not the way he wanted to make it to the Final Four floor. And he told me he thought that last three was in. He just certainly had made it. Great man-to-man -man defense. This is a good move. Go inside to Jackson, particularly with Graves picking up the first. And they say it touched Jackson last. Nice job by Graves to go over the top on Jackson. But if you're Marquette, well, you ought to attack inside quickly, particularly since Graves picked up that easy foul. First two trips for Marquette, two turnovers. Collison has not touched it in the low post either. Diener gets caught on a screen. Heinrich off the rim with the jumper. Heinrich There's Wade. Going inside, Jackson. Graves wipes it away. Graves doesn't have tremendous leaping ability inside, but he's got the wide body. They say it was last touch by Marquette. It's going to Kansas. Again, I'm surprised that Collison hasn't touched the ball inside. Here he goes. Langford loves to drive, and he delivers. Bad defense by Townsend gave the baseline drive. We've all seen Langford, a tremendous slasher to the basket. First five to Kansas. Nice help. Pass, but if you're Wade right now, you've got to get your hands on the ball and try to create something offensively. Get a screen, get him loose. Here he goes. Side jumper in and out, and Collison takes it away. Townsend with the misfire. Miles will take the baseline, and inside is Marquette coming out with Merritt. Jackson running the floor pretty well for a big man. Diener back to the rim, tipped around. Townsend, Merritt again, right over Collison. With Marquette's first two. Good interior passing there, Jim, but I thought maybe they might have made one pass too many. It gave Collison a chance to react. He couldn't get to the ball. Love it. Graves, yes. Langford with the assist. Excellent back screen by Kansas to get it open. Right now, oh, well, Graves, Graves is down. Graves twisted his ankle. Yeah, it may have landed awkwardly, but he doesn't want to be taken out. Jim, if he'd weighed 290 pounds the way he started the Kansas practices in early fall, that ankle would never have recovered, but the young man has gotten in condition, and he wants to stay in his ball game. 
Kansas the West regional champs. They had two games where the opponent had a three point tying attempt that includes the first round game against a feisty Utah State team. They took care of Arizona State Duke and Arizona. And of course in the Big 12 tournament to leading up to this NCAA tournament didn't make it to the finals they were beaten by Missouri. We have an official who was stunned down at the end of the court when Graves fell and he's just trying to get himself back together. And we see the officials and he too just needed a, a standing eight count and he's ready to go. <laughs> Pick up full court. Nice job by Miles. Jim again I'm going to have to say Wade has got to be more aggressive here. I realize he's quite the team player a very balanced offensive player but he's got to recognize in a game like this he's got to step up. He's not taking the shot to this point. Now push off on Miles who fouled out of that last game against Arizona. And that is where Roy Williams was fortunate to have the likes of Lee to come in the ball game and really do the job defensively for Kansas. But we're talking about a Kansas team that basically is seven deep. People were saying all season long that depth would do them in. It has not been the case at all in this tournament. Well, one lack of, the, of depth. One of the things, Jim, we can remember in 1982, the team that won the national championship with Dean Smith, Roy Williams, was an assistant there. And that basically was a five man team with limited substitutions able to win a national championship. Here's Wade's first attempt. And yes, it's a two. Well you like a player that is a team player as Wade is but he has to recognize what his role has got to be in this game. He has got to take a leadership position early. Giving Kansas the credit for having been to a final four before really helps him experience wise. Well Heinrich got a great screen from Collison but off on the jumper. Diener at the other end with a three. A lot of confidence by Diener to pull up and take that three without anybody under. Kansas pushes it up and Langford lays it in. Well, we talk about pushing the ball up the floor. Kansas does it as well as anybody. Tom Crean has to be upset with that. There's Wade turnaround. Tough shot. Townsend kept it alive. Merritt tipped up by Jackson. Wade, he's back on his feet, but Kansas has a one-man advantage, and Miles quickly at the other end and one. Wade seems to be all right. How about the fact Kansas again pushing the ball up the floor? Miles off to a very good start offensively. We'll see the tip. The ball is outside the cylinder, but a grabbing onto the basket that could have been called for some interference here. See the ball is outside the cylinder, but uh, what we had right there was a Marquette, and I think it was Wade. It was Wade. Yep. It was Wade. The officials could have called that. Graves goes out of the game and Kansas brings in Bryant Nash. Nash who has played extremely well coming off the bench is a great leap around the inside gives up a lot of size here but can really get in the air. Jim I think back in 1974 of course the big talk in Greensboro North Carolina was the NC State UCLA, UCLA matchup but in that other side there was Al McGuire's Marquette team that did beat a Kansas team went on to lose in that final to NC State where Al said I had a terrible coaching game. Had two technicals in that game. David Thompson and crew the champions. Diener driving kicks it out. Townsend with the three. Chased down by Marquette. And so that's tipped out and it'll be Marquette ball. That's the only time Marquette has ever beaten Kansas. Kansas winning the other six matchups. Jim here we have the game five minutes old and we have Townsend has taken more shots than Wade. That's not what you want if you're Marquette. And Wade underneath. Tough shot. Langford comes in to collect it for Kansas. And again pushing the ball up the floor goes Kansas. They're so good at it. Collison with a tap. Merritt sweeps it away. Collison would like to have that one back with a two handed catch. Here's Townsend again. And he's going to the line. That's going to be on Nash, Jim. So Nash is first. Two for Townsend. But one of the things about this Marquette team, not only their outstanding three-point shooting in the tournament, but they've been a very good free-throw shooting team as well. 77% on the season. 
And Michael Lee, what a tournament boost he has been. And Graves returns to the Kansas lineup. Graves comes back in with just one foul, so uh, in pretty good shape if you're Kansas. I was wondering who was going to pick up Jackson with Graves out of the ball game. Well, here comes the super sub on the Marquette side. We're talking about Novak. And we got a 2-2-1 full court press right now by, by Marquette. Nice recognition. Inside Graves. Jackson, no call. Novak knocks it off of Graves smartly, and it's Marquette's. Excellent passing by Kansas and a great block by Jackson. He was a third team all SEC as a junior at Mississippi State. So we're not just talking about a transfer that couldn't play. You're talking out of that league. Absolutely. Great fake by Wade. Got Kansas to commit, so he'll go to the line. Wade plays under control. It's really interesting. We look at him now, Jim, without question. First team All-American. And looking back through his high school career, he was the second, uh, the seventh leading vote getter for Mr. Illinois basketball. So here we are three years ago. That's what people thought of him as a prospect in high school. And here we are today as one of the premier players in college basketball. That foul a moment ago was on Heinrich. And Wade, just a junior, first team All-America, the Conference USA Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year in his league. Pretty nice combination, isn't it? Oh, you gotta love that. 12-12 on the board here in New Orleans. Well, if you're Kansas, the first thing you want to do right now is let Carlson touch the ball. Zone defense now by Marquette. 2-3 zone. Takes a little bit away from the idea I had in mind to get Carlson that ball inside. Langford, he's open, lays it in. And again, there was Collison, much like he was against Arizona's 1-3-1 defense. He's such a decoy in there. He occupied two men in that zone, opened up the lane. Langford has six for Kansas. No back. Great shooter. Can he ever? Not this time, though. And Collison's the man underneath. Again, the Jayhawks trying to get numbers. Pull up three. Heinrich. They break so well, and particularly now that Marquette's in the zone defense, Heinrich took advantage. Great change of dribble. Red Wade, they'll count that basket. Wow, what a first step by Wade on that crossover. Roy Blue Williams right was, by. Uh, he was saying, wait a minute, that was travel. Yeah, well, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm not going to give him a travel on that one. That's just a great crossover dribble, and Roy better put a hat on. He's going to catch a cold over there if he's going to get that close to Wade on that drive. <laughs> We that saw is a lightning that, that, fast <laughs> first step. Yeah, that's where you get a hat on. Collison off the miss. They go soft hands of Collison on that rebound. And Lee takes the three. Yes. Again, a very unselfish play here. Any team that gets to this point has got to be unselfish. But Kansas always, they have a heritage of giving that ball up. And Lee, after Heinrich forced the steal, that was probably a pretty good foul by, Town by Sanders because Kansas had the numbers. Heinrich was on the floor. Sanders went right over the top of him. Kansas probably could have scored on that play. So a good foul if there ever is such a thing. Terry Sanders just in with his first foul. Aaron Miles will take out Langford, who's not ready to sit. <laughs> Langford off as he can, Jim. We talked about a guy, number three scorer on this team, averaging right at six, about 16 points, 15, six a game, but capable of having a huge game as he did against Arizona earlier this year with 20 points in the first half. Yeah, he's got a good start going here already as well. He'll take a breather in the Jayhawks. Nice. Heinrich, make sure he's on the behind the three line. Yes. Uh, Collison and Heinrich, two guys that were co-mister basketball in high school in Iowa, played together for so long, just had a feel for themselves there. Forces Marquette to take the time out. Inside Merritt. Too strong from right inside. Now with Lee and Heinrich in the game, Lee taking off. Miles trying to make the perfect pass, probably didn't have it there. Big 12 with two teams for the second straight year at the Final Four. Jim, it's kind of interesting. 17 times, two or more teams from the same conference have gotten into the NCAA tournament. It all started back in 76. 
with that great Indiana-Michigan combination. We've actually had it five straight years now. Two teams from the same conference have gotten into this Final Four. Novak stepping over. Missed his first two from out there. Pretty good job of a closeout that by Lee. They're going to charge right at him and make him put the ball on the floor. Good defensive strategy. Heinrich, Collison helped out, and Heinrich missed the chipping. Second time tonight, Kansas has had the block out on the baseline. Layups were missed. Sanders keeps it in Marquette's hands. There's Wade spinning. Collison clears. Here comes Kansas running. Heinrich. And Marquette now with its largest deficit of the tournament. Heinrich went down. It must be a little slippery around that basket. Heinrich had the tough fall there. Remember Graves earlier, and one official went down there. Wade, tough shot. Sanders with the putback. No block out. Wade now understanding what he's got to do. He's got to take over this ball game. Marquette's going to get back into it. Well, Diener trying to... Save it and try to call a timeout. His teammates all caught him on the side. <laughs> Talk about good teamwork. He tried to call timeout and he, he crashed into somebody. It might have been knee to knee over there, limping a little bit. Uh, he never got the timeout. It'd be Kansas ball. I don't think they said he had control of it, taking it out there with him, Jim, so he never got that timeout call. Heinrich's going to go out. He had a little slip, suffering a little bit. He takes it with me, tries to get the timeout. See, he didn't exactly. have control of the ball. Bradley, number 10, has come in for Marquette. And Diener to the bench. Seeing a lot of guys with some bumps and bruises early in this ball game. Fortunately, nobody hurt that looks like they're going to miss that much playing time. But down this end of the floor, guys are getting knocked. There's that back screen for Collison. Doesn't work out. Marquette goes back to the man. The man should get Collison open. Sanders jumps. Collison patient. And another two for Kansas. That's a good statement, Jim. When first team All-American are patient, as Collison was against Arizona and has been so far tonight, they will eventually explode. Big overplay. Before this one tonight, Marquette's biggest deficit of the tournament was nine. Down nine at one time against Pitt. They faced their largest deficit of the NCAAs, 11. Well, they are not giving way much to look at, are they? Got too strong, tipping. Look at Collison controlling inside. And with that controlling in the defensive glass, Kansas can get running. Lankford, he now has eight. Another player down, and I think if I'm Tom Crean, I talk about cleaning up this floor. It is very slippery down on this end. It'd be a way to slow this game down a little bit also to bring it to the attention of the officials. No back from the corner. 0 for 3. Over the back, on Wade. Right now, Kansas totally in control of this basketball game. It's going to be interesting to watch Wade here now, Jim. You know, despite the fact that he's a great player, he really only has, this is his second year of playing college basketball because he sat out a year. The experience factor of whether he realizes what it's going to take for a great player to step up, you're going to have to see it in the next nine minutes of this first half. He's hit two of six from the field. Marquette is a team 29%. Man to man now by Marquette. They've tried to zone as well as man to man. Collison inside open. Sanders no match. For Collison and Kansas doing the right thing, going right to their All-American center. Timeout, Marquette. Well, Jim, they had six in. They have two left, have an 11-3 record, all told in the NCAA tournament. So without question, their report card, the best in the country. This Kansas team was the team of the regular season for its conference. You look at the full body of work. They won the league. It's amazing. Marquette here in the Final Four has been out-rebounded three times and tied in rebounds once in the four games that got him here. And Kansas taking advantage of that now. And on the way up, foul here on Marquette. Diener with the foul. Two for Heinrich. And the former co-MVP, as you said, Billy, Mr. Basketball at Iowa with his teammate Collison, his Kansas teammate. That Iowa pipeline started by Rake LaFrance. 
Coming up big here at the start of this one today, 33-16. Well, what you love about the young man, he came back brilliantly against Arizona after going one for nine against Duke. Miles almost got out there from behind. Diener. <laughs> Merritt in and out. Well, it's Kansas just controlling it. Thomason with eight rebounds in this game. He's like an octopus in there. He has such great hands. Miles with the short jumper. Zipped out. Kansas will control. Right now, you see the experience of Kansas looking like it's paying off. Marquette is a frazzled state right now, both on the offensive and the defensive end. First foul on Merritt. Shooting over 65%, but Kansas set a new school NCAA record of shooting 67.8 in their explosive win against Arizona State, and they're picking up right where they left off in that game. It's starting but, to look like that game right now. That's right. Their second round win. The last loss that Kansas had was against Missouri, a team that this Marquette club beat in overtime in this NCAA tournament. So they're certainly capable of not getting it done so far. Heinrich with the three. Inside, it's Langford. He is a quiet slasher. Doesn't have the size, but knows how to get good position. And right now, Kansas rebounding prowess is really causing Marquette problems on both ends. Diener driving on Miles. And Jackson secures it, puts it back. You don't find Collison had the ball taken away from him often, but he did there. His first two. Langford this time outside. Again. And again, Jim, just beating Marquette down the floor before the defense gets set. Kansas gets a good look. Great execution by Kansas in this first half. Diener off the screen. Out to Miles, and Langford will put this one away. Great leaper, and what you have there is Diener trying to take over the game, as I said that Wade should try to do, who's not on the floor now, trying to do too much against a Kansas team that knows how to help out on screens. It's a 21-point lead. Langford has 14. Jackson will try to make his moves on Collison, gives it up, Diener. That's a big break right there. Jackson with nice hands on the inside. A tip, Merritt, second try to the line. He's a young man that committed as a sophomore in high school to Iowa State, thinking he was going to play for Tim Floyd. And when Tim Floyd left, it opened up the door for Kansas. And they've been really lucky with that. Collison, and they've won 112 games in their four year careers. That's 28 wins a season. I thought a great move this year was with Eddie Sutton in Oklahoma State game. Walked down in front of both benches and shook both of their hands as far as a compliment and a class act. How well they have played and the class they've handled themselves with in the Big 12. And what Roy Williams has the opportunity right now is to rest Collison, keep guys out of foul trouble. One of the few turnovers in his half for Kansas. Here's Wade. Inside Jackson. Beautiful pass by Wade. Oh, Wade just glides around that floor. Maybe being a little bit too unselfish in this uh, first half. Now with Collison out, Kansas doesn't have that same inside presence. Miles. Third time today, Jim. Kansas has set the screen on the baseline. That time, Miles delivered. They missed two layups earlier. Nice job by Graves. Miles with eight points in his first half and opened the game with a big three. Miles has had problems shooting, but nobody questions his ability on defense, and he's on Diener right now. That Graves denying the pass inside to Jackson. And doing it without a foul. Nash with a pick outside on Wade. It sets up Langford, only a second. Oh. Miss. Nash wow. didn't, didn't realize how open he was. <laughs> Good Chap defense. Chapman trying to work something out. Every pass challenged. Nobody helping Graves. Here's where he picks up foul trouble. And he had, Jackson had to call a timeout. And that's the seventh team foul, so a one-on-one -on -one for Jackson. I think Roy Williams would get Graves out of there. Graves stepped in the line, got in there a little early, and officials didn't say anything. I'm surprised Roy Williams is leaving him in there. He's got five minutes to go in the half. You sure don't want him picking up his third. Quite a gamble here.
Two for two, Jackson. He has eight. Seven double doubles on the year for Jackson. And we're back to the two three zone again. Allison to Heinrich in the corner. Chapman has just come in, trying to stay with him. Look at where Jackson is. He's way out of position here. There should be somebody open under the basket. Yeah, we'll switch off with Chapman. Yep. Now really? Lee with Wade on him. And on the line, they're going to say it was touched by Wade, so it'll be Kansas ball. Wade, such a cool basketball player. <laughs> he picked up the yeah. ball and just launched the shot. It almost court. hit a uh, half-court shot right there, thinking that the ball was going to Marquette. Let's watch this defense. It's a 2-3 setup, but they're trapping all over the floor. Five on the shot clock. And now two on the shot clock. Jayhawks inbound. Time for a pass, catch, and shot. Heinrich should get out there as far as he can. Get a solid screen. He's going to come off a double screen, looking to get a quick catch and shoot. Lob. Collison. Oh, that should have been a foul on Diener. He went underneath Collison. Pretty well executed play. Roy Williams wanted it. Watch Diener go down underneath here. He knows what he's doing. There's the block out underneath Collison. No foul call. Wade over Lee. Ah, tough shot, but he soared through the air for a two. Jimmy's waited a little bit too long to put it in gear. Lee, three. You can't trade baskets now if you're Marquette. Especially twos for threes. Like they haven't found a defense yet to stop this quick push up the floor by Kansas. No back. Boy, for the... Great sub. It's been a tough start and over the back on Jackson. Boy, give Graves credit. Terrific blockout on his part without having won a national championship. And he's Sutton in that mix potentially to go in the Hall of Fame this time, Jim. Yes, they'll announce the inductees for 2003 here in New Orleans on Monday. There's that 2-3 zone. Langford, he has the touch tonight. He has now 16. What he did is he came right in behind the zone so that the man defending didn't realize he was there and then a terrific reverse dribble Kansas has stayed in their man-to-man -man this entire game Wade block Jackson don't fault Graves in that when he made the block Jackson was his man Graves still on the floor with the two fouls and that surprises me Graves had inside position on Wade, didn't touch the ball. A solid screen, Wade out of position completely. Good job by Graves. Heinrich, another look. This time good. Jim, what do you find? A team that can win a national championship will have guys that all of a sudden, for some reason, start playing smart. And Graves has been that man for Kansas. Complete change in the way he's approached the game the last few weeks. particularly against Arizona and this first half today. And there again, Graves did not commit the foul. Jackson expected body contact, misses an easy one. And they still push it up. You can count on that. Collison, soft roll. And that's the distance that Nick Collison will take that shot. Marquette has had no answers defensively. And that's the largest lead of the game. It's up to 23. Jim Novak is the number one three-point percentage shooter in Conference USA at 48%. He hasn't had one all day. Look at that explosion. Just bursting out of the pack. Langford, reach in Novak. They say it was in the act of shooting. No answers for Marquette, and Kansas just showing how well they push the ball up the floor. Coming up, Billy, we've got Singler at the half with Greg Clark and Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo. Complete first half analysis and the presentation of the Chevrolet Player of the Year and Coach of the Year coming up on Singler at the half. Langford with a huge half. The Fort Worth, Texas native. Huge throng coming over from Fort Worth. They had to back.
charter a bus to bring all the friends and family. Jim, over. I think the major difference between these two teams is the fact that most of the guys in the Kansas team last year were in a Final Four where they lost to Maryland. It seems like Marquette really hasn't adjusted to being in the big picture here today at any time in this half. Look at Heinrich, so far out. Tipped around, Collison put back. Left hand, good hands. Deflating whatever confidence Marquette had. Go for Diener Langford for Kansas. Second time he's grabbed the rebound, pushed the ball up the floor himself. Miles passes up the three. And he'll go to the line. Novak with his second. Miles to shoot two. And Jim, Miles uh, showed us there that something that he may have to do, you assume Kansas now is ready to move on that final, but he has got to show that he's got confidence that he can hit that jumper. He had the wide open jumper penetrated inside, got by with it by getting fouled. But you've got to see when you get that open jumper that you can take it and make it. Again, second time today he's picked up. How many times have you seen a national semifinal with a team leading by 27 in the first half? Well, I have seen one by more when Michigan State had Penn down, but I didn't expect this to happen here in this half. I did expect Michigan State to give Penn a pretty good going over. That's way back in 1979. Gave Wade the basket at that end. Langford trying to battle. Jackson instead pulls it away. Diener lost the handle. No place to go. Oh, yeah. Here's Heinrich at the other end. No place for Diener to go. The numbers were all Kansas way. There again, a sign of inexperience. Roy Williams still firing his team up. You'd think he'd be sitting over there relaxing a little bit. No back. Three. He has not made a shot today. We're talking about the best outside shooter in Conference USA. For a 30-point lead, Collison lays it in on the follow-up. Just He's got like, a double-double in the first half. Just like a pass. Three seconds and a half. Inside, no nope, shot. Townsend off the mark. Jim, with the exception of the Notre Dame game in the five losses that Marquette has this year, and they lost to Notre Dame by 21 on the road, their losses have been by three, seven, three, and seven. So not even double digits. This is a whole new experience for this young team. Second highest first half point total at a final four. Second to UCLA back in 1965. Heinrich on Wade. Wade inside, bouncing around into the hands of Merritt. And Collison again. Those huge mitts, great hands, good pass. Miles to Heinrich. Boy, that was a great outlet pass. Looks like Graves hurt himself again. He's holding his wrist. And that was Collison again with those great hands. And Kansas on the run, no matter whether it's off a steal or off a rebound. Graves picks up his third. Probably what Marquette should have done earlier. They just keep running and running it to perfection. Miles set a record at Kansas for freshman assists last year. And he and Heinrich know how to run that two-on-one break to perfection. Diener spins away, thinks he has an open look, and another Jayhawk comes in on him. That was Langford coming out to help out, realizing that Miles had been in the air. Merritt. And look at the Jayhawks box out. Again, a hit ahead by Collison. Graves inside. And Merritt tied him up with the arrow. Everything right down to the arrow going to Kansas. But again, that excellent passing by Kansas inside. Got 25 made baskets and 17 of them with assists. Uh, absolutely. How about that ratio? Terrific passing, whether it be on the break or in the half court set. A 
about how patient Collison had been offensively. He doesn't get what he wants the first time. Didn't know Jackson was coming from the weak side. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Do you think that first half by Marquette had anything to do with the jitters being on this stage? Well, obviously, they had no experience, any of these players, in playing in a Final Four before a big uh, advantage for Kansas. But I never thought that they would come out the way that they did, particularly from a shooting standpoint. Miles has to beat the shot. Oh! That one goes down as well. Well, Jim, remember how he started this game, hitting a three, a little bit more of a traditional three. And when Miles is hitting threes, you're really in trouble. Wade doubled up. Wrap around pass. Jackson swarmed Should've out the to pass. the Jayhawks. Two on one. Diener's tired of seeing this. Now on Marquette. Jim, we're going to take a look from the outside. A young man that doesn't take them very often from the outside. Miles only shooting 23% from three on the year, has only taken 92 of them. But today, he's buried two of them. He's hit two out of three from out there. Heinrich with one more. That was the second foul on Diener. Well, Diener has been backpedaling this second half, just trying to stop that fast break from coming at him. on the sidelines, trying to get his team back into some semblance of order. And right nothing away, working. comes to Lankford. Oh! Just nothing working for the young coach from Marquette. He's done such a great job turning that program around, bringing it the luster. It's the first time that they have won Conference USA regular season. But they are having a rough time today in every phase of the game. Nice pump fake. Off the glass for two. Wade. He's having a solid game, Jim, because he's not really forcing anything. Miles has been the man offensively. Nobody even stopped him. There's Barrett, a little soft shot. Well, actually too strong. There's Quick that. outlet. Miles goes right past him. Tom has got to call a timeout right here. Get his club back in some semblance of order, Jim. They have lost all sense of confidence in this game. It has gone from bad to worse. And is a club that, as you pointed out, had beaten the champions this year. And you'd say, how could this team have actually controlled Kentucky? Well, I was playing better than anybody in the country up to that point. I, I, I was going to say, as hard as it is to watch for Marquette fans, can you imagine what Kentucky is feeling like right now watching this? Well, the only thing that would resemble this team and the team Kentucky played as they were playing in the same uniforms. Other than that, they wouldn't recognize anything. And, you know, giving Marquette its due, I mean, it didn't just defeat Kentucky. Man so I'm hit. saying they controlled that ball game. Stopped the team that all of us believe was the best in the country up to that point. Uh, this fast break offense, Kansas from the get-go. There we see the two-on-one -on break. The great hit ahead. This one off the steal for Langford. Kansas breaking out of every opportunity. It's been the complete difference in this ball game. Inside Langford comes over to help out. As I said, no matter what the situation, good job by Sanders getting back. Last touch by Diener. But you notice how often Jim Marquette never even has an opportunity to set up their five-man defense. It's always Kansas with the numbers on the break. Sixty percent from the field. Heinrich and Collison with their experience so patient. Miles just from the start. Miles. Eighteen for Miles. Collison and Heinrich setting the stage and Miles having the big offensive game today. There's those hedge moves that Roy Williams was talking about, doing a great job on those double teams. And the other thing that I really don't understand is why Wade is sitting so much in this ball game. I don't think there's any way Marquette can come back, but you want to have him on the floor many minutes as he can play. 
Last touch by Kansas. The under 16 timeout. You know, the question everybody's been wanting to have answered this week, what about Roy Williams to North Carolina? He won't touch it here. He will not answer that question. But people speculating, boy, this is going to make the Jayhawks lose focus with all this <laughs> talk circulating about Roy and North Carolina. Hardly the case. I think that that question uh, is not to have to worry about being answered. Have they lost focus? I don't think so. Here they come again. Stolen away. Marquette with a rare break. Wade. How smooth is Wade? Now he's about as smooth as you'll see. Lee to Langford. What an unselfish play there. This game does remind me an awful lot of that Michigan State Penn game where Michigan State was leading at halftime 50 to 17. They eventually won by 34. Magic Johnson had the triple double in that game. But this game has been a team game for everybody playing a terrific role for Kansas. It reminds me of a game I saw right here at the Superdome. And that was Montana throwing five touchdowns in Super Bowl 24. 55 to 10 over Denver. Now, if you're Roy Williams right now, what you don't want your team to do is to get in a trading basket game. You want to start planning for the next game. And I'll tell you what, he will start to try to ride this team to get him ready. Wade got hit in the mouth. He's down the other end of the floor. The officials don't see it. Now they do. And Roy Williams has uh, come out onto the floor. He was uh, during the middle of that trying to get the officials to come over. Does Wade catch an elbow here? Well, he just got smacked by Collison right at the bridge of the nose. You see it right here. Got it with uh, part of the wrist right into his nose. He's still down on the floor. A young man who uh, is a terrific basketball player. As we said, first team All-American, Conference's Player of the Year in Conference USA, Conference Defensive Player of the Year. It's a very smooth player. But today, and I think it will come with experience, he has to learn how to take over a game early. He'll have to come out here. Young man who's married, has a child, sat out the first year at Marquette, not that heavily recruited. But he is uh, quite a talent. Married his high school sweetheart. We saw that story from Greg and Clark and the crew. Pre-game show. You talked about the triple doubles in tournament history. The start and Wade joined Lick with the names he joined. Magic and Andre Miller took that Utah team off that regional final performance all the way to the final. Second nice feed by Bradley on the inside. This game is not in doubt, so it's a matter now if you're Roy Williams, you got to start playing for Monday night and get your team to stay focused, not trade baskets or get sloppy. Novak would like to hit one. For a guy that shoots as well as he does from three, he just hasn't been able to get anything open. And a bump of the body. Call it on Lee, I believe. Oh, Collison, his second. Jackson, who has been obviously a great addition to Marquette. We talked about him transferring out of Mississippi State. Had the Big time game against Kentucky, 10 for 16, 24 points, 15 rebounds against the Kentucky Wildcats. The team that up to that point had really done a fine job against Postman. Graves back. Heinrich in. again. Wade, well, you got to think of it coming back in just a few. Well, you see what Roy Williams is doing. We talked about the short bench that he has, but he wants to get people's legs fresh. For Monday night. And a lot of time to play in this game, so there's a lot of chance for Kansas to get sloppy. And that's one thing you have to fear as a coach with this kind of working margin. You wonder how much, though, you're willing to give up on sloppiness to get your, since you don't have that great depth, get these guys a lot of time on the bench and save them for Monday. 
Michael Lee. I think we'll see that under the 10 minute mark. Given maybe Heinrich and uh, Collison some breaks as we've given Collison some right now. There's Collison's defensive ability. Diener just can't stay with him, and this time Diener gets hit in the nose. And here you're playing for pride if you're Marquette. You've had a terrific season. Obviously, everything has gone wrong in this game. You can't just, just totally outplaying them. You look up at the scoreboard as a coach and you say, okay, guys, we're down by 40. Let's get it down to 30. I mean, that's the way you gotta look at it. That's Play not for a, pride. That's not a speech he's had to make before. No, no, no. That's not a speech that he hopes he ever has to talk about again. in his life again. That's right. And you know who's got to really be dying? Sitting up there with us is Tom Izzo. Watching his Vienna. former yeah. assistant uh, coach this ball game and say, I don't want to be there either. Locked away by Kansas. Still hungry. And finally, Merritt inside. And there's Nash giving up some power inside. Merritt giving him a good uh, shoulder check as well. Lee, young man, having an excellent tournament as Lee. We saw the great defense on J.J. Redick of Duke that took Redick out of that ball game and probably changed the complexion of Duke's offense completely. Doing it at both ends of the floor. He's the fifth Jayhawk in double figures with 11 now. Jackson. And it's Langford. Well, what you like to see, Marquette, is hustling. They're battling. Kansas has been working with this, well, basically working with a two-to-one advantage on the scoreboard for most of the game. They've hit their last nine shots. Well, they didn't shoot but 76% in the second half. They were 22 for 29 against Arizona State, so just more of the same here. Novak works his way free, and he's on the board. Novak. His first two. Nash can go by. It's an explosive leaper. Not there. Trying to go to Graves. Saying that that's not the case at all. I go back to experience, but a couple of things statistically. The great fast breaking of Kansas. The other thing, too, against Kentucky, when Marquette stopped their 26 game streak, they were 10 for 19 from three. Today, they have not been able to buy anything outside the arc. Here it becomes again. If you're Kansas, it's a matter of execution. Just play solid basketball. That's against Kansas. Number four on Graves. And Roy Williams, livid with Graves, trying to make a play that was not there. Collison's going to come back in. Graves will sit down. How mad can you get at a guy when you're 39 points up? Well, I think if you're a good coach, what you're trying to do right now. And Roy Williams certainly is a great coach. You're trying to keep your team in a concentration move. Not to look at the score, not to lose sight of what's ahead. Merritt, nice shot. Again, with a little pickup, full court zone trap slows Kansas down slightly. But with Miles, you've got to be careful. He'll break that trap with the dribble, and then you'll have numbers for Kansas. Marquette back in a little matchup 2 3 zone. Miles back out. Collison five on the shot clock. Good hands. And that was Townsend. Got a little piece of it to Townsend. Diener inside, and he's clobbered. Wow. One out of nine from the field is Diener. Well, Diener has had his problems, as I said, in the last two games. He had played so well offensively in the first two tournament games for Marquette, but he was two for eight against Pitt and one for six from three 
against Kentucky, two for eight on the on the game. So he is four for 16 coming into the final four in the last two games. He's going to sit down now. Well, you saw Wade come on the floor. He's back. There's this 2-2-1 two, two, full court trap. But as I said, you get Miles the ball against it. And Wade comes in, almost makes the steal. Stead's called for the foul. Like that ball was called number three, Wade, Wade. Well, Roy Williams is on his way to his first win at a Final Four since his first game in the Final Four when he beat his mentor, Dean Smith, at the 1991 Final Four in Indianapolis. Well, that was historic in a, some respects because Dean Smith did not coach the final minutes of that game. That's right. He was thrown out of that ball game. Bill Guthridge took over from that point. I'm sure Roy Williams didn't want to see that happen. Good box out by Novak. Went on to play Duke in the final in Indianapolis. First championship for Mike Krzyzewski. And Roy, after that win in his first Final Four game, lost his next three, all to ACC teams. Well, to his alma mater, North Carolina, in 93, where he was the only non-number one seeded team in that tournament. Yeah, Duke in the 91 final, North Carolina in 93, and a year ago, Maryland in the semifinals. Oh, Langford again just blows by Townsend. And it's not going to count the basket. It was way outside on Townsend. People, I think, that guard Langford underestimate that first step of his. He really explodes to the basket. Four changes in the Marquette lineup, including Joe Chapman. Jackson back on the floor as well. And Diener. And Sanders. There is a walk violation on Miles, not called. Langford again. Langford. 23 for Langford. He just seems to be able to find those cracks, doesn't he, Jim? Entire game. That is his specialty, though. Yep. Playing so much bigger than his 6'4 size. Wade cuts through, got caught underneath. Marquette ball. Beautiful move by Langford, using obviously his strong hand, his left hand, to put it away. He's made 11 out of 13. Pretty efficient. Tremendous wingspan you saw right there. Three on the shot clock, Diener. No one there. Collison out, and Graves back on the floor. Here's the 2-2-1 full court press again. Back court scoring, that's a small advantage, huh? 70 to 19. <laughs> and there you see the zone. After that, full court zone trap. Nice pass inside. Tipped up by Nash. Jackson clear. How about the way Lee made room for himself with his shoulders? Really a powerful young man. Wade and a reach in on Kansas. Wade, a really good crossover dribble. Whether right hand or left, keeps the ball low to the floor. And with his quickness, it's a tough move to stop. That's on Langford, his first. Wade will shoot a one and one. 17 fouls. Yes, this Marquette team facing those uh, doubters every step of the way. I can't tell you how many people, when the pairings came out, said, you know, I think Holy Cross might be the first round Cinderella. <laughs> you know, they did put up a great performance there, the Crusaders, in that Two first Two years game. in a row for Holy Cross. And you got to remember, in Conference USA tournament, this Marquette team was beaten by UAB in the first round that they played. So, you know, it's not surprising. And then everybody said, I like Missouri in the second round. Absolutely. It was overtime thriller. Then you had to like Pitt. It had to be Kentucky. Right. They're not going to be Pitt. They can't beat Kentucky. Well, the answer for the person that said it's got to stop somewhere, they, they had that, they had that straight, and they ran into the Jayhawks today. His second. Six. Second on Sanders, Graves to the line. Of course, so many people heard the story this week about Marquette in a league game coming down to New Orleans and taking on Tulane. And Coach Crean diverting the bus driver 
to the Superdome where he brought his team in, take a look at the arena, to again try to get them to visualize the idea of coming back here to New Orleans for the Final Four. There, was, of course, was no basketball floor down at that time. It was just all concrete. Yep. And someone from the Superdome took him over, showed him where the benches will be. There was this timeout on the floor. Keith Lankford with a game high 23 for Kansas and this is a kid coming out of high school in Texas not very highly recruited many people thought at 6 4 just not big enough to play in the Big 12 but came off the bench as a freshman last year had his coming out party with 20 against Oregon in the Sweet 16 as a starter this year obviously becoming that number three scoring option Kansas was worried about losing with Wayne Simeon down. All right Bonnie inside Merritt with the putback. Wayne Simeon with shoulder surgery last week in New York City. He was not able to be with the team out of the West Regional, just not able to observe from the bench, but he's here today. Oh, nice move by Merritt. Lost the handle on that ball going up, Jim, and you can see Marquette really showing their competitive nature right now. They're playing hard despite the fact they're totally out of this ball game. Going to call it on Chapman, and when a game gets this lopsided, you start thumbing through the books to see where this one might rank in the annals of Final Fours. And the all-time record, I'm a little surprised that it's only 34, but that Michigan State pin game you brought up, in fact, Michigan State in that game, that's the last time a team scored 100 points in a Final Four game. Now that was 101 to 67. They were leading at halftime 50 to 17. I remember, I think, Dick Enberg and I, well, actually, Dick, who made all the calls, Jim, said, okay, Al, this is your kind of broadcast. Take over. <laughs> and he proceeded to entertain people for the entire second half. I know you've enjoyed, though, the week, how much it's, it's brought back to so many people, the great warm stories of, of Al McGuire and your special friendship with the Marquette legend. Well, I'll tell you what, we could use him right now here to entertain us for this second half, I can tell you that. I'll never forget Al in 1977 winning that championship and sitting on that bench in tears knowing he had already resigned at midseason, decided he wasn't going to coach anymore, and what a finish for an incredible career as a coach. How one-sided is this game? If Kansas was shut out this half, they'd still be leading by seven. You're kind of rubbing it in here. Well, this is to total domination. Amplify of what a first half tsunami this Marquette team ran into. 59-30. And one of the things that All-American Dwayne Wade will learn in this game or should learn from this game, that if you are a superstar, you have got to step up right at the start of the game and sense it and sense that things aren't going your way and try to take over the game. He is actually kind of blended into this ball game. He's going to have solid stats, but not what you need from the guy that's got to put a team on the back when everything's going wrong. And a huge ovation from the Kansas throng for Keith Langford. So now you have all three top scorers for Kansas, Heinrich, Collison, and Langford on the bench. And that chartered bus that the family and friends brought over from Fort Worth it can stay put for a couple of extra days here. Hawkins in the game. Cold, good inside position by Graves and gets fouled. And it would go into their four corners. He had the guts to stay back in his zone, did not go for the trap or the bait. And finally, when North Carolina got impatient, missed a shot, Marquette never looked back. Lee, the MOP of that tournament. Sent a telegram to the Marquette team this week that Butch Lee. He said, just remember, number 15 will be with you. Names like Butch Lee, Maurice Lucas, Jerome Whitehead, Bo Ellis, Dean Miminger brought back to mind this past week with this Marquette team making it to the Final Four. Miles inside, and that's swept away by Wade. Deaner, no place to go again. And he lost control of it. Lee, little scoop. Graves tip in. <laughs> Merritt got a piece of that ball, took off some of the English. Graves. Let it drop right through. You know what, Jim, you're talking about Allen, this Marquette program. 
He finished in the 70s. He was eighth and 70, second and 71, seventh and 72, fifth and 73, third and 74, 12th and 75. He was in the top 10 right on through to his last year. That program was probably right behind UCLA as the best during that period of time in the country. Uh, Diener thought he'd made the three. Yeah, he took off the other way, didn't he? Miles, oh, he was making a little move on Marquette and got away from him. Well, did you think that some of the players that are presently on this floor with 442 to go, Jim, about two hours ago that we'd expect to see out here? Vincent in the game right now. Steven Vincent for Kansas, number 20. Freshman from Lawrence. And Nash with the read on that, forced the steal. Excellent read by Nash on that play. Anticipated that it was going to be a pass, not a dribble. Now here you see the subs now executing the Kansas offense very well. Nash with a three. Wade again. Silky smooth to set himself free, but never shows any expression facially. But he's been too patient in this game. And back in this defense, it really helps Kansas because there's no pressure really on the ball. No need to try to make a big play as Nash does there. Third on Sanders. Turnovers, inability to convert, shots not going in, errant passes, and just too much from every aspect. There you see when Wade got hit in the nose. Everything going wrong for this ball club. Nice three-point play by Nash. We got Grimm in the game for Marquette. Chris Grimm, freshman from Brighton, Michigan. And Moulin Yawn for Kansas, number 55. Leon Wade, one matchup to watch here that could be interesting. And there's Wade again, Jim. So smooth. 18 delay for Wade. Yeah, I mean, there's an 18 point game, which is a fine basketball game. But he's the kind of player who has to understand a, night, a day like today, a 30-point game is what he's got to do for his club. And he's capable. And Diener coming in there to help force the tie-up and the arrow to Marquette. And number 34, Christian Lee. Kansas bringing in Brett Olson. The walk-on. And Nash sits after a big three-point play. Wade, turn around three real quick. And goes to the line for three. Foul called on Vincent. Billy Halbaum, assistant coach on the Marquette side. There he is, Trey Schwab. He needs a lung transplant. He's number one on the list back in his region. I had to do some research to figure out that he would be capable of being within that two-hour limit to get back home in case he gets that critical call. Private plane at the ready right. the entire time he's been down here this week in New Orleans. The call ever came. Wish him so much luck here in the coming days. Trey Schwab, assistant to Coach Tom Crean. Well, Wade, who's 78% free throw shooter, not getting what he wants. It's going back to Kansas. It's a good break for Moody right there. That ball got tapped out because this is not the same as playing a scrub game back in Lawrence. I mean, you're, at the, you're, you're right now at the final four playing some substantial minutes. Outside three. How sweet it would have been for Vincent. Here's Diener. Rattles out. Grim, well done, put back. Here comes that full court pressure again. 
Rather meaningless pressure at this point in time. Jan uh, does a good job there hanging on to the ball. Diener's hurt out there on the floor right now. I think he hurt his knee or his ankle. Off the front of the rim, it was Olsen. Still belongs to Kansas. Diener's going to come out. Bradley comes in for him. Chapman also. There it goes. Wade out. Wade, Wade and Diener out of the ball game. Coach Crean realizing. And I guarantee you he's talking to them right now, Jim, about next year when we get back into the final four, we'll be ready to play. That's what you've got to do. And you know that Tom Crean with his psychological work with his team is probably doing that right as we speak. I tell you, it's a dynamic young coach, this Tom Crean. Vincent going to Moody, kicks it back out. And the three from the corner off the mark for Hawkins. Chase down Olsen. Tignon. Jumper. They keep getting offensive rebounds. That was Moody with that offensive rebound. Number 34, Kansas, who went to Roy Williams High School back in Asheville, North Carolina. And most of the starters from Kansas standing up on that sidelines, rooting like crazy for these guys to they, score. They want to get them in the, in the books with a basket. Well, there was a sub one time from Kansas that got a chance to get in a Final Four game and get a shot up. Dean Smith. He got 29 seconds, I believe. That's right. I don't think Adolph Rupp ever got a chance to score. So there aren't many guys, the Bob Knight and the Dean Smith, that had a chance to coach a national championship team and also play in a game. That was the 1952 Final Four. The coach Dean Smith. Isn't it amazing the, co the connections between North Carolina and, and Kansas over the years in terms of Larry Brown, you know, a North Carolina grad, goes to Kansas, coaches them to a national championship. Roy Williams, a North Carolina grad, goes to Kansas, has him in a position now to play for one on Monday night. Dean Smith, a Kansas grad, goes to North Carolina and coaches championship. Well, how about Dean Smith getting his championship in 1982, his first championship? Right here in the Superdome, got his second one here also, and now Roy Williams, Monday night, will be playing for his first. It's been in that final before in 91, but Duke beat him 72-65. Hey, there's a basket. Get it to Don. Well, this has been a tough, tough day for Marquette and their basketball history. But great for Kansas. We should savor those special wins they had, though, all season long and then over Pitt and Kentucky last week. That's it. Who would have believed it, huh? Had that last basket gone in, it would have set the all-time Final Four record for the largest margin.